Hi, I'm Reverend Tom Kearns. Welcome to 333 Magic 9, where the tarot cards and astrology stars come together to help you. By combining the visual messages of the tarot and the energy of astrology, you can be prepared for the opportunities and challenges coming your way. I hope you will like this video and also press the little bell for notifications when my new videos come out. The tarot card for the first week is the Tower. It suggests we need to reevaluate our place in life. There may be a conflict between the status quo, which is ending, and the future. The tarot card for the second week is the World card. It also represents an end, but it's a positive ending of a cycle, so a new adventure can begin. The tarot card for the third week of the month is the Queen of Swords. It suggests that you are in command, especially in anything that deals with knowledge and perception. The tarot card for the final week of the month is the Sun. It represents success and victory. Aries, the tarot card for the first week is the Tower. This energy suggests we need to reevaluate our place in life. There is a conflict between status quo, as Saturn represents the current structure, and Uranus, which represents the chaotic future. You will benefit by reviewing what you have built in your life and what you may need to destroy so that the future may emerge from chaos. This is usually a difficult time, as people tend to want to maintain what they have and are somewhat afraid of an unknown future. Now, as we look into the astrology, the month begins with a few lunar bumps that may keep your emotions off balance. Now, the moon will square the sun and Venus and Uranus, which can cause disagreements with partners especially when it comes to money, investments, and sensual issues. Things may settle down midweek, but then they can take a turn for the worse, as Venus will oppose Saturn and square Uranus. And this happens at the end of the week. This suggests you must review past investments and their future potential. New values or responsibilities may clash with traditional structures. Make an effort to be flexible. The tarot card for the second week of the month is the world card. It shows a woman dancing surrounded by a wreath and symbols of the four elements of the zodiac are in each corner. She reminds me of Shiva and represents the positive ending of a cycle so a new adventure can begin. The rewards of hard work may be coming your way in both material and spiritual terms. This is the final card of the Major Arcana. The second week opens with a number of challenging aspects as the full moon is conjunct Uranus and squared by Saturn. The sun in your eighth house is conjunct Venus and Mercury, opposite Uranus and squared to Saturn. This represents a potpourri of energy that needs to be sorted out. It mostly affects your interaction with others on the financial and intimate levels. You can be more sensitive than usual, and you should be more aware of the feelings of others. Take the path of peace and understanding, as more gentle energies will come and manifest at the end of the week. The tarot card for the third week of the month is the Queen of Swords. It shows a queen seated on a substantial throne holding a sword in her hand. She appears to be gesturing to her subjects. A bird fl flies above her in the sky. This suggests she is in command, 
especially in anything that deals with knowledge and perception. She is very capable and will not accept any type of false information or manipulation. The third week brings a bit of a help as Mercury and the Sun trine Jupiter in the 12th house of spirituality. Now, this is important so you can take some quiet time so you can understand the important messages that are coming to you. And they come from your subconscious and your intuitive mind. This can be very helpful as retrograde Mars will square retrograde Neptune. This aspect causes confusion that can lead to actions and words that you may regret. Mercury conjunct Venus in your ninth house may save the day, for this is an energy that can represent peace and understanding. The tarot card for the fourth week of the month is the sun. It shows a happy child on a white horse surrounded by sunflowers. The sun is shining in the background and he's holding a flag of victory. This is a very positive energy that suggests success in the probability of reaching your goals. This sun radiates warmth and happiness on the personal level and success and recognition on the professional level. Now, as we look into the astrology, the fourth week begins with Jupiter going direct in your 12th house. This is a good omen on the spiritual level. It suggests a deeper understanding gained through help from angelic or deeply spiritual sources. Listen to your intuition. Mars in the third house will trine Saturn in the 11th house of associates, bringing a positive sense of cooperation from co-workers, friends, and associates. Take advantage of new opportunities, but check the details because Mercury will oppose Mars and this can cause some confusion. So do your best to cooperate with others. Hi, I'm Reverend Tom Kearns and this is my story. If you are a spiritual seeker, it may help you on your journey. I believe your spiritual development is as important as your religion. If you look at Christianity, it focuses on the life of Jesus. But Jesus was never a Christian. He was Jewish. If this thought intrigues you, you'll enjoy my new book, Light from Water, Freeing Jesus. It's available on Amazon.com and through fine bookstores. And it may help you on your spiritual journey. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Please like this video, subscribe, and ring the little bell to be notified when new videos come out. And if you'd like to arrange a private psychic and spiritual reading with astrology, just go to my website, internetpsychicreadings.com or professorastrology.com.